Welcome back to Operation Pixel, and none shall pass. <laughs> so this this one, I remember mostly because of the mission really sucks. I guess we'll get through this cutscene first. Jack, your Veritech has to reinforce the destroyed's defending Zone 8. Roger, base. Wolf 10 to ground pounders. Well, these allies are actually useful. They say you're a pretty good marksman. <laughs> we keep getting rushed by battle pods, but they got powered armor commandos back in the mud. Maybe you'll have better luck than we've had. Yes. Yeah, I remember. I remember that's that's immediately where I was like, this mission's gonna suck. Cause they're like, I heard you're quite a marksman. I was like, oh great, they're gonna ask me to snipe people. And there was like only one of the enemy powered armors yeah. that you could actually snipe. Yeah, there's there's really only the one guy. Cause as soon as as soon as you get close enough to the first one here, he immediately notices you and starts to uh -oh. and starts to try to zap you with his late with his long distance laser. Which I found, if I do something like this, I can dodge most of it. Actually, you know what? I I, I remember this mission, uh, I lost so many times on. It was one of those times where we had to, like, cut the episode, and then I had to get to the end of it in between episodes. And the time I actually succeeded at it, I managed to, like, uh, get to the end with all my hit points. Or at least, I, I don't remember yeah. if there were all of them, but certainly I think, most of them. Yeah, I don't think I got hit much, like, at all. It was, it was real nice. Okay, so then right around here, you should be able to snipe yep, that other one. No, I remember because there's this little marker here on the ground. Just take a couple steps forward. And then... There you are. Here's the only one you can actually snipe, because as soon because you may not be able to take him down in one hit, but he doesn't react to getting shot at yep. from full-powered sniper shots. There we go. <laughs> yeah, you showed him. Now then, there's your there's your buddies mm -hmm. coming along to help take care of the uh, the regular battle pods that are around that corner. And then I remember from somewhere around here, I was able to snipe them actually. But yeah, yeah, I think you were able. You were just even standing on the ground. Was I? Yeah. Whoa. Uh oh. At least most of the missiles miss. Oh, oh <laughs> your allies took them out yep. for you. Yeah, so see, that's that's where the allies actually come in handy. Not that it was that big of a deal. It's just oh, two battle points. Oh, and now points. I think you can take. Now I think this was the part where you were able to take care of the next one by going over to like the corner of that of the building up ahead, turning, turning to the left, and then, and then guardian mode up and down, yep, firing yep. missiles and yep, and occasionally the gun. Now pod. I want to try. I want to try one other thing here. It's probably not going to work because most of these snipers are absurd at this point. If I can, nope, yep. You see that? He almost sniped me while moving at a great distance. Yeah. So I need to move a little bit further back. Yeah, right about the corner. There's a the... certain place around here where he yeah, can't reach me. Yeah, it was the rear corner of that building or something, pretty much. But yeah, yeah, if you stay right there, you can shoot him, but he can't quite, he can't really shoot you. Mm-hmm. I don't know if your gun pod actually could reach him or not, though. Here, watch. Oh, I guess it does. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yes, yeah, so this guy was probably the biggest nuisance because there was just no way around him. Yeah, you you mentioned about the uh, about uh, game design and uh, yeah. enemy AI and yeah. how so how let me, you let me tell the story here. Okay. Just, just just for the sake of making it all very clear and straightforward. Um, I have a friend who did some programming stuff, and Whoops. he was telling me, oops. So those enemy battle pods uh -huh. that, that were dropped off earlier. Yeah, totally forgot they were coming up on me. Uh, Better save your missiles for when yep. they, uh, for you fighting the next guy up yeah. around this corner. So he's just up ahead here. Right around the corner. There he is. Uh-oh, he spotted you. Yes, he did. Whoa! Can I... Can I take cover? Have I baited him out now? No! Nope. Nope. He's, nope. going, he's nope. going back around. Yeah, nope. What a least, jerk. But, but at least you got time to reload your uh, your missiles. Let's see if I... Oh, oh no! Oh no! You see how much health that took yeah, off? Yeah, so. that's ridiculous. Um, so yeah, I have a friend who does who's done a bit of like programming for games and stuff. And he was telling me about how uh, it's kind of funny because in things like first-person shooter games... Um, you actually have to go out of your way to make computers stupid because it would be a very extremely simple 
for the computer to like constantly track exactly where in 3D space your head is and where the enemies need to shoot to get a perfect headshot 100% of the time. So the game designers have to be like, all right, they have like a radius where they're likely to miss. Otherwise, you just be headshot the second you come out every time. Yes, they saved that for the impossible difficulty setting. Yeah, <laughs> pretty much. Um, all right, so... Yeah. Yeah, that's that. Uh, you also brought up the fact that racing games, same kind of thing. Yes, they have the uh, like, the perfect racing line, and then they have to have to make a bunch of not so perfect lines for the uh, for the AI cars to follow. Otherwise, otherwise they would mm -hmm. they would they would win every time, and they would just the, the you'd, you'd just lose every time, and it would just be annoying and terrible and whatnot. Yep. Because computers don't have to play like we do. Because they're a bunch of freaking cheaters. Alright, so now we get on to the boss fight. And I remember this being a particularly epic battle. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Finally we run it, and this is... I'll wait until after this. Can't dodge lasers like that. Nobody ever misses. And you must be the Micronian ace who managed to defeat Scar and Kiura, the finest warriors. They have disgraced the Zentrati, but now I shall atone for their incompetence. After I kill you, Zerah will make me his second in command. I know you do. <laughs> You're the butcher of little Mesa. He does have quite a voice. Yes. Yeah, there, see, as, as I mentioned, mm -hmm. I mentioned last time or whatever, that was what was going on, so quick. Oop. <laughs> <I'll find you. laughs> That's actually really creepy. <laughs> uh, I'll find you. Uh? Uh, scary voice. <laughs> Too quiet. <laughs> I, the microphone may still hear you, because it's a really... Scary voice. It's a really good microphone, but... <laughs> Yeah. Anyway, I was I meant I remember mentioning previously, on when we originally did this episode that the uh, did this fight was I was mentioning about how these uh, how these uh, these battle pods in the uh, in the Macross movie they had got a redesign which looked made, which I think made them look a bit made them look better because the original designs here had these big sort of paddle feet. So I've I've noticed one thing about this guy. Uh, he can't do his, um, sniping fire, except when he lands. So, if I catch him while he's in the air, he can't do his, his big, I'm gonna kill you in two hits shot. Ah, nice. So, I'm and, just gonna take advantage of that. And then you... So, for the record, uh, I beat this mission on my first try, uh, the last time we did it, by doing this exact same nonsense. Uh -oh. Oops, that was a bad choice on my part, man. Dodge it. <laughs> Oops. Uh, because yeah, this is no. I was I was I also discussed that in in the scope of this game, uh, there's been a few delightfully challenging missions where like I get out of it and I was like ah that that's all right. And then there's some other missions where they're like why not snipe four robots and then give you no opportunities to snipe three of them, and like make them do absurd amounts of damage. Yeah, I mean, it's just like, sure, you can snipe them, but only if you can tank their refer their return fire. Mm-hmm. Which you can't. Yeah. Just trying to get him to lift off. <laughs> there we go. He's not a very good sniper, because otherwise he'd just wait for you to pop up. And yeah, not... no, he's, he's impatient. Oh, Oops. poop. <laughs> Ouch. He fires really quickly once he touches the ground there. Do you, you see why I'm not fighting this guy fair and square? Because that's how this game handles his boss fights. With that level of ridiculous uh -oh, intensity. Close to you. Yeah, it's fine. He does that once in a while, but... I kind of feel like I'm not too worried about most of his damage. As long as I can avoid his freaking sniper fire. I should be okay. Yeah, when he starts circling down towards the ground, you should probably be 
Shoot me. You might even yeah. want to tra change to battleoid mode to drop down even faster. I guess that's something I could try. I'll just die. Ha 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 ha. Oop. <laughs> I'm so glad I found out about how to like change into guardian mode without hovering forward all the time. Made it suck way less. He's going for the snake from Yep. <laughs> I'm not staying up there. So this is how I beat this guy the first time too. He also got me with like one sniper shot that time. So it's really hard to play super perfectly. Especially because I'm impatient and this is really annoying. That was another thing that I complained about. It's like, why does this guy have so much goddamn health? When he can kill you in like basically two hits. Like, what kind of game designer thought that was cool. I want an epic duel Blade. with this guy, and this okay. is this is not a rad boss fight. And it's because the game design gameplay just doesn't really allow for cool battles. Which is very sad, because I would love to have a cool battle with this guy. Yeah. Which then I think I mentioned my Macross game again, because it seems because it seems more oh, cinematic. Than this. I remember, I remember kind of cringing at that part because, like, they're like, oh, you're playing as Jack Hunter or whatever it is. What is his name? Jack? Jack Ranger? Jack? It's some sort of edgy, just, like, fighter name. Let's see. What's the, uh, what's it say in the manual? I don't think it was Hunter because I think that was, that's Rick. Yeah. His name is like Jack Archer, Jack... something. Yeah. Does the manual not have a list of characters? Uh, let's see... It's... What was his name? Well, I didn't see it, when I, but I, maybe I wasn't looking closely enough. Alright, well anyways, yeah. uh, the point is that, like, he's... They're like, his backstory is he fought in the previous war, and then once the aliens invaded, he joined these guys to fight the aliens. And it was like, okay, so I've been fighting people for all this time, and then suddenly he's going through some morality crisis, like, my god, I enjoy winning and defeating our enemies? <laughs> What's wrong with me? <laughs> it's like, yeah. Though I mean, I understand, like, trying to add that sort of, like, humanity to war thing. Yeah. But, like... Which I it think, just seems really awkward to bring it up now. Yeah. Well, I think the issue was that the uh, case of that he was doing this for vengeance and whatnot. Yeah, maybe. And how vengeance is empty and whatnot. But he felt good about it. I don't know. Still seems weird. Anyways. Um, so we'll come back next time on Operation Pixel. Maybe we'll know what Jack's last name is. Maybe we won't. I couldn't tell you. But uh, we'll see you then.